So I want to do a quick video on like some questions and answers I've prepared in regards to situation ethics. So what is situation ethics? Now this is a relativist and teleological uh, theory of ethics and it suggests that we look at every moral dilemma or problem we face individually but we apply one general principle which is love thy neighbor and we should take any action which is the most loving thing to do so like in um, Bentham's utilitarianism you do the action which produces the most pleasure here you do the action which is the most loving thing to do so um, I already talked about what is situation ethics now it's in the middle of Antonianism and legalism now, legalism is where um, an ethical system is based on rule after rule after rule. And John Fletcher, um, not John, Joseph Fletcher, who is an advocate of um, situation ethics, he said that if we go for a, um, a, a for an ethical system which is on the legalism side, suddenly the rules become more important than the people. And that's not the point of having ethics, is it? And on the other end, you have Antony... Um, antinomianism and this is basically where there are no rules free society and Fletcher, uh, Fletcher said this would basically cause like you know a moral chaos or you know just upside down everything would turn people would be doing whatever it would be absolutely a disaster so he said this uh, situation ethics provides something in the middle and he describes it as the situation follows a moral law or bro breaks it according to love's need. So basically, um, if we have the moral law, do not lie, we will either follow it or break it according to which is the most loving thing to do. So, you know, and um, that's basically what it means. Is That is actually a quote which we should use in the exam. So there are four working principles of uh, situation ethics. So let's go through them. Number one, pragmatic. Uh, Pragmatics. This basically means that we need to take the context into account. Ethics needs to work in practice. It's not something of theory that we should do, you know, um, like for utilitarians, do something greatest number, greatest good, where that would restrict you from even buying ice cream because you know you should be giving your money to charity. It should be a practical, something that actually works in reality and in like every context. The second principle is relativism so it's not about saying no never um like always uh, it's no fixed rules the only fixed rule is um, love thy neighbor and most loving thing to do those are the principles okay that's the only principles and as you may have noticed love thy neighbor doesn't contain always or never or any of these kind of words in it personalism well um situation ethics is part of christian ethics Situation ethics is, um, yeah, basically the Christian God is pers is a personal God. He's not impersonal like the Greek God. And um, so being personal, this means that every situation, when we try to act to do something moral because we know there's a God, we shouldn't act in an impersonal way. We should uh, make our problems like personal and then apply general principles that we've got. I actually love that. Name. These all come from the Bible. So... You know, we should apply them like that. For the conscious, now the conscious is what we use to determine what is the most loving thing to do. And I've written here that some would say it's not an intuition, but it's actually a guidance by the Holy Spirit. Now, this could be because if some uh, extreme, not extreme, but some Christians may believe that our conscious is the Holy Spirit. It's a part of us, which is part of God. So, um, it's a, as I mentioned before, it's a teleological theory of ethics, which means it looks to an end, a purpose, as opposed to deontolo uh, deontological theory of ethics like Kant's. So, I want to mention about five criticisms here. So, let's look at them. Sometimes you can miss the big picture with situation ethics. You might say immediately, I must do this action. It's the most loving thing to do. We're not realizing in the long term the consequences it can cause. So, you know, you might miss out the big picture and not see the long term, you know, things. You just might focus on the short term. There is no structure to this type of ethical system. It's just one principle that you try and apply to every situation. So there is no collective ethical framework. And so sometimes people say, is this really an ethical system? Because it's just like somebody's made up this technique to deal with life. 
and they say emotions can cloud our judgment this means that um you know our judgment what is the most loving thing to do sometimes we're not able to see what is the most loving thing to do because our emotions might cover it so it's not usually it might not be easy to determine what is the most loving thing to do disputes can also occur because what is the most loving thing what i see is the most loving thing to do somebody else might not see it if i see the most loving thing to do is to pull out the plug and uh, actually uh, maybe uh, pro euthanasia uh, euthanasia somebody else might say that's not the loving thing the loving thing to do is to try and get this person to recover to come back to life and there's also the aspect human nature versus agape the selfless christian love well Human nature means that we have these animal attributes, you know, greed, lust, whatever it is. And human nature, that is our human nature, and this agape, selfless love, is it even possible? Are, isn't everybody just looking out? Like, do we really give charity to money to help other people, or do we do it to show off or to get that feeling of good, or to avoid the pain we get from not doing it? So I hope this helps give a bit more advice on situation ethics. Please visit my blog.